أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وبارك وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear students, I hope everybody is fine and doing great. I welcome you all to this introductory lecture relating to subject business law. I'll be teaching you this semester business law and inshallah I hope we have a good time in an environment of learning where we can learn from one another. I say we can learn from one another because uh, I want students who are active means there is two way of communication you and me so inshallah we are going to have such an environment uh, inshallah in this class so today's lecture is called introductory lecture because in this lecture I'll be uh, discussing to you uh, some introductory um, comments about the business law in order for you to give give you in order for you to get a view of what business law is all about and what we are going to study in this subject and also I will I, I, I will try to um, I mean elaborate the in importance of business law um, in the course that you are studying in the program that you are studying which is BBA so inshallah later on I mean in, in later lectures um, you will get more information more information about the importance of the business law but here today I'll try to um, um, give you I mean a picture an overall picture of the business law and its importance so in today's introduction lecture we, what we are going to discuss is uh, listed down here you can see self introduction class introduction course contents mode of lecture material access and the, at, at the end subject introduction why I have chosen uh, these contents for today's introduction introductory lecture it's because um, I mean as as long as we don't know each other uh, we cannot learn from one another so that's why I have put the first content which is self introduction I will introduce myself to you so you have a picture of who I am and why I have been chosen to teach you this subject so it will give you a better picture uh, of uh, uh, me and also uh, it will help you um, come to an agreement that this is the correct guy from where we are studying so it will help you basically uh, in your study uh, of this course so my name is Nasratullah Nuri um, my background is uh, uh, both I have an academic background and a professional background I've been teaching in Salam University since 2004 and as a profession I am a professional accountant a public accountant uh, so first uh, let me a little bit talk about my academic career and also then I'll talk about my professional career I've done my um, bachelor's from Seacoast University Peshawar uh, with a specialization in finance and accounting BBA finance and accounting then I did my master's from University of Peshawar with the same specialization mm, so I did my MBA from Peshawar University with the the specialization in finance and accounting after completion of my education I started my first career as a university lecturer here in Afghanistan and started my uh, journey from Salam University before Salam I've been teaching in one of the other universities private universities in Kabul then I started with Salam but that was for a very short period so Salam uh, it was 2014 when I started and um, till date I am teaching with Salam University and uh, that was my like academic background now let's discuss about the 
professional background. Uh, by profession, as I told you earlier, I mentioned earlier that I am a public accountant. I'm in, I have been an associate member of ACAA, which is a professional body uh, in UK, um, Association of Professional uh, Accountants. It's called CPAA, right? So, Certified Professional Accountants Association. So, I've been uh, an associate member with this uh, professional body since 2016 uh, till December 2019. So, this December, I had to, uh, I mean, drop my, my membership with them because I am in a proposition to get membership from the CPA Canada. So uh, that's in progress, inshallah, sooner or later, I'll get that uh, membership as well. Um, now let's talk about why I've been chosen to teach this subject. I mean, f from the start of my career at Salam University, I've been teaching this subject. So, um, like, uh, I've been uh, teaching it in the morning shift, in the afternoon shift, and in, in, in the evening shift. Uh, so it has been now uh, five to six years that I'm uh, teaching this subject, and this could be one of the reasons that the management had decided, uh, uh, chosen me to teach you this subject. It's because I have a lot of uh, experience teaching this subject, as this subject is, uh, it could be one of the, like, uh, we can say one of the boring subjects uh, to the business students because business is innovation, business is new things, and business is something with the with the graphics, something with the glamour, something with the practical experience. So there is always something that you can see. But business law is basically you see it's a law subject, but it has been put in in, in BBA. It's because it's very important when you carry out business, you have to be uh, abide by the laws, certain laws. So, but don't worry, uh, inshallah, we are going to make this subject very interesting for you. And uh, the lectures will be delivered in a way that it is, it becomes interesting to one lecture to another lecture, one lecture to another lecture. You will see how the lectures are connected, interconnected to one another, one another and inshallah uh, when with the pass of with, with the passing of days you will see each lecture you'll learn something new and uh, um, so I've tried to make it I mean design my lectures in a way that is interesting for the students uh, as well as uh, uh, for me as well so we could learn I mean, in a better environment. So that was all about me. Now let's come to class introduction. Remember that uh, this subject is for the students of uh, fifth semester. And obviously, Salam University Kabul, Faculty of Economics, Department of Business Administration or Management Sciences. So we teach the subject for for the students of fifth semester, and you are the students of fifth semester. So I'll be teaching this course to all students of three different shifts: morning, afternoon, and evening shift, male and female both. So this is for all of you. Uh, for all of you, I mean, this is one lecture delivered to all of you guys, so uh, you can learn, inshallah, from my lectures so next course contents the contents of uh, this course are going to be covered inshallah in 16 weeks they are designed in a such a way that each week has I mean we have to cover certain topics in each week so let's see week one there are certain topics you can see week two it has certain topics week three week four week five week six week seven and and so on and so on week 16 all right so we discussed 
uh, about the topics which are going to be covered in 16 weeks now I mean which books I recommend to you for the self-study or one of these books you can see uh, there is mercantile law by I R Hashmi there is mercantile law by M C Shukla um, I mean the third book that I'm referring you to is business law written by Khalid Mehmood Chima and this is one of the books easily available uh, here in Afghanistan and also you can uh, get that book from Salam University bookshop as well uh, I mean th these other two books they are basically I think Indian writers uh, so if you can find those books no problem I mean all these topics that we discussed earlier in divided into 16 weeks are covered by these books so I recommend you uh, to buy one of these books as a source of self-study now this is like a list of uh, the topics that we study and have been divided into 16 weeks but these topics divided into 16 weeks I have designed them uh, in, in, in chapters so basically uh, there are there are 10 chapters you can see chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 chapter 4 chapter 5 chapter 6 chapter 7 chapter 8 chapter 9 and chapter 10 remember this that these chapters are not um, I mean according to the chapters that are going uh, that you, you will see I mean uh, in the book that you are buying these chapters are designed by myself in a different way in a more logical in a more uh, in, in a way which, which is connected I mean in a way where one chapter is connected to other chapter other chapter is connected to other chapter so I'm going to go through one of the chapters uh, to give you a, a view that how the chapters are designed and how uh, chapters are linked with one another and then each chapter has few lectures and one lecture is connected to the other lecture so this basically helps students to remember chapter name then topics within the chapter and then what is each topic about then other chapter then there are few uh, lecture within the chapter and what each lecture is all about so this is basically when you study for example uh, especially for the examinations or if you study for longer hours in order to get the knowledge out of this so you can remember that uh, through a channel through a through a, uh, through an outline that 10 chapters each chapter has three or four topics so two topics each topic is about this and that so this easily could help you uh, study business law uh, in a very easy way and uh, help you remember the contents of business law in a very easy way so let's go through the first chapter as a sample you see this is the first chapter in first chapter there are three lectures this is lecture one then you see this is lecture two then you see there is lecture three in all these lectures three lectures are connected to one another when we study them when you go through these lectures you will see that they have interconnectivity and it's easy for you to remember chapter one is about contract and its, and its essentials within chapter one there is lecture one introduction to business law Chap lecture two law of contract or contract act about the contract and lecture three essentials of valid contract so very easy you can remember like uh, on the on the tip of your fingers so uh, this is all about the uh, course contents and also I have discussed the uh, mood of lecture mood of lecture is uh, uh, since uh, you know it's there is difficulty uh, of the worldwide there is a worldwide problem uh, so that's why we have decided to deliver lectures online this time um, but even if the if the uh, uh, I mean things get gets better we'll continue uh, 
recording the lectures and providing to besides the uh, class lectures later on so usually uh, in class when we have lectures in the class so we have both the slides or the we can say lecture notes which are slides and also the class notes which usually mm, I provide to students on the whiteboard but here um, in online lecture mode I'll provide you all the uh, the videos the link of the videos and also I'll provide you the material within the group within the specified group so you guys will uh, I mean refer to the lecture watch the lecture listen to the lecture have the notes open in front of you go through each slide one by one while listening to me and pause the video if you have uh, uh, a question somewhere within the slide you have a there is a there is a word that you don't know about just pause it there write down that word with yourself and then come back to me with the question I'll be more than happy to elaborate that that question that you have that topic that you have uh, uh, so inshallah uh, I'm sure uh, you will have uh, your question answered so this is the this is going to be the mode of lecture right I've also uh, discussed the material access you can access to material through the links provided to you and also as I discussed I'll, I'll provide you with all these these lectures and remember that these lectures are every day updated so uh, it's also a good thing for you now we come to the subject introduction so let's go for today um, I'll try to elaborate the first lecture of uh, the subject which is which is called introduction to business law right but before that I have to a little bit talk about the uh, business law as a subject and as a law all right so let me first introduce you to the business law as a subject so business law is basically it is a subject you can say it's a subject where all the laws all different laws uh, which are related or with with any connection to the business are discussed in this subject for example contract law law of partnership and few other uh, uh, laws of like uh, we have say law of uh, sales of goods and law of agency etc etc so basically here all those agreements or dealings or deals or, or we can say a certain structure of, 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 of principles and and rules uh, which are developed in order for the business to be run smoothly are going to be discussed in this subject as a law business law so inshallah I hope it's clear now we say business law is a subject where all the laws which are in any connection to the business are discussed and studied that's called business law subject now business law as a law we can say it's a law it's an international law first of all it's an international law in this law there is a there is the collection of all the laws governing a business but international I mean it's a general uh, uh, general discussion here we study the laws uh, like in general manner and in, in, in the big picture in the like in world picture not in a specific specific to a country picture understand what I'm saying like this law is applicable everywhere in every country in all the countries in the world and then you know each country has its own local commercial law so uh, that local commercial law contains the law derived from this business law this international business law right for example Afghanistan has its own commercial law so if we study the commercial law the general things have been derived have been taken from the business law then they have been modified according 
to the geography of the country according to the other rules and 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 you know uh, the religious side and legal side and all that other frameworks based on that the local laws have been defined and modified but this business law uh, we study it in general like this is applicable all over the world and also applicable in Afghanistan so it gives us a general guideline as a businessman as a business advisor advisor as a business manager as a human resource manager as a marketing manager it gives us a guideline that how we can carry out our activities uh, in, an, in, in a legal way, right? So that's all about, I mean, short discussion about the business law as a subject and as a law, right? So here we have the first chapter. It's called Contract and Its Essentials. That's the name of the subject. In this subject, mainly the main discussion is the contract in the essentials or the important factors or important elements of the contract but this is the main main topic so in this chapter we mainly discuss these two things in different lectures so the first lecture is you see introduction to business law so before i mean i have already uh, i mean shortly introduced you to the business law as a subject and as a as a law now the word business and law has its own explanation so let's go to, through that what is business business you know you have uh, studied in previous semesters and you know what business is what business is and what law is but here i'll go through i mean uh, the definition uh, and divide the definition into different elements so it's easy for you to understand basically there could be various definitions of the business law of the business but since we are now business law students so here we'll look at the definition of the business from law point of view so we can say business is any legal economic activity right so just saying any activity is not a proper definition of business right any activity if you say any activity that could not be a proper definition because any activity could be illegal so illegal activity is not a business and if if that legal activity is not economic activity even that that could not be called business because we have social activities as well which are carried out for the for sawab purposes for reward purposes the reward we 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 we, we expect the reward in the life hereafter so those business activities could not be called um, business activity right economic activity is an activity where goods and services are exchanged with the price with the money with the currency right and uh, i mean there is something given and so something obtained and that is i mean uh, uh, physically uh, touchable and their, their benefits could be used utilized in this life and we can get a social I mean uh, an economic benefit out of that so we say any uh, for, the, for the for the definition of business there are a few things very important number one we, the word there is any it could be any activity it's it's very open but any there is then limit limit is that any activity should be legal that any activity should be economic if the activity is not legal not economic we cannot call that business activity right so any legal business uh, any legal economic activity carried out continuously right so the, the third thing legal economic two things number third is continuously this this activity should be continued uh, continuously not one time it should not be one time activity for example you have a mobile you have used used it for three years and now you want to sell it if this activity you you have sold it on profit maybe on loss do you call it a, a business activity no it's on a business activity because it's one time activity if you buy and sell mobiles continuously and that's your job that's your profession that's the a source of income for you then we can call that business activity so an, act, an activity which is legal number one number two which is economic number three which is carried out continuously not one time continuously by whom by person humans entity uh, person is a natural person person by person I mean natural person and entity I mean a legal person 
person like me and you and legal person could be salam other organization aib bank all these i mean different organizations they are entities they are legal activity uh, legal person so they can also carry out businesses so number one is it should be legal activity it should be economic activity number three continuously it should be carried out continuously number three it could it should be carried out by a legal person natural person or a legal person legal person or organizations what should be the purpose number four number five the purpose is to earn some profit reasonable profit and profit is also reasonable not unreasonable profit and if we generate unreasonable profit that is also not a business right so that is prohibited in islam as well as in other social uh, laws as well so we can we can say any legal economic activity legal and economic activity carried out continuously by a entity for the purpose of earning profit if any activity has these five characteristics that that activity is called business right now we come to law basically there are different definitions of law you can go through yourself different people has defined law differently so you can basically go through uh, 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 that definitions by yourself but I will just uh, please go through the definition if you have any question come back to me I'll uh, go through three important things that any law should have look all the rules regulations that are created by the go government or by the state or by the people of the society right I mean basically principles are everywhere Salam University has its own principles in, uh, in, in common language we call them Qanun law every teacher has its own Qanun right every class has its own Qanun every university has its own Qanun but that is in general terms in legal terms we cannot call those principles Qanun because those principles are created by themselves they are not recognized so there are I mean three things which are important for a principle for a for a rule to be a law number one recognized by the state the government should recognize I mean if rules and regulations created by anyone from government side or from the society side if they are recognized by the government by the state number one characteristic is this that it should be recognized the, the by the state government should recognize it should accept it right should give uh, a, a, a should give it a, a recognition as a law then we that principle could be called law number two that principle besides recognition of the government it should be imposed from the government side not from the society society side for example Salam has its own principles those principles are only and only recognized by Salam University and they are imposed within the Salam University they are not not imposed they are first not recognized by some other universities right if you get the list of those principles to other university and tell them to please uh, apply these principles they will say we don't recognize them and they will never impose impose means to act upon right to act upon so principles recognized by the government by the state and number two imposed by the government I mean government tells you orders you to 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 implement those uh, to accept those principles and to act according to those principles right so that's number two number three enforced by or in the courts of the state uh, so if principle is recognized by the state and then imposed by the state and there are people who are not accepting them then what happens enforcement happens so this organization every organization develops there is neither recognized by the state nor imposed by the state not enforced then they are we cannot call them 
what law the fourth important thing here is two things more uh, is that they should first they should be developed then recognized then imposed and enforced the fourth thing is rule of conduct means all those principles and law uh, principles and, uh, and regulations should be rule of conduct rule of conduct what does rule of conduct mean rule of conduct mean that they should provide you guidance on certain things to be carried out in a uniform way right in a standard way uniformity and general understandability it should be of general understanding and it should bring uniformity right so that's all about the law now the law is divided into two two classes or two types one is public law and one is private law understood when I say law then you have to remember three things here recognized by the state imposed by the state enforced in the courts of the state right so then you, you will remember that any principle which is recognized imposed and enforced right other other than that that principle is not a law that principle is general guideline so the, the law again when I say law three things recognized by the state imposed by the state enforced by the state this law is divided into public law and private law public law the definitions are given on the slide so you guys have to study yourself I'll give you very very short uh, I mean uh, definition or explanation so basically public law is a law which explains which talks about the relationship of the government to the society and the relationship of the society with the government right there, is, there are two two parties one is society the other is government so any law which explains the relationship between the society and the government that is called the public law the examples are administrate administrative law constitution law criminal law municipal law and international law all these are public laws private law is basically a law again from government recognized by the government imposed by the government and enforced in, in the course of the uh, government but this law basically explains or guides the relationship between the people of the society one community to other community right within the society all those laws which explains how the people of society should should behave to one another should have relationship to one another all those laws are called what private law but remember these are also recognized imposed and enforced by the state understood so these law includes business law property law companies law succession law family law etc and etc right so we can say business law is one of the branch of private law one of the branch of private law right okay here we have the the, the definition of business law as well uh, as I discussed earlier then we have there are uh, um, five uh, uh, terminologies very important terminologies number one is act number two is bill number three is constitution number four is legislation so I'll go through them in a very explicit in a very simple way act in simple word in simple definition like in in com is a common when you say act it means amal but here act does not mean amal here act does not mean action here act is basically a piece of document a piece of document where laws are written laws are written and this these laws are written and introduced or designed by the people of society and then proposed to the government to the parliament to go through these laws and then to accept to pass and after that it goes to the like Masharano uh, Jarga and then it goes to the president when president signs this becomes a law this becomes an official document right so we say a piece of document where new laws are written introduced by the people of society and then recognized imposed and enforced in the state that's called act so act is basically a piece of paper a document a formal document where laws are written and these laws are introduced by the people of society right number two bill Bell is again the same piece of paper, paper, the same 
uh, uh, like a legal document, but here the laws are introduced by the legislation, by the legislation body. Kuwai Mokanana, the Khwana Chakum, Kawanin, Newe Kawanin, Marifiki, Daulata, Chidaulat, the discussion of Ki, Ariban discussion of Ki, Parliament, Ki, Lower House, Ki, Upper House, Ki, Mashrano Jarga, Ki, Parliament, Ki, Mashrano Jarga, Ki, Pasana, Ki, Kana. اغنا ورسا با رئیس جمهور پیم زاکی نو اغا اغا قاغست چه باقی دا غصه نوی قوانین وضع شیوی دا دولت دا خوانا وضع شیوی اغا تا منگا بل بایو او اغا قوانین چه دا خلق دا خوانا وضع شیوی او دولت تا معرفی شیوی چه ترسو دولت اغا تا قانونی برنا ورکی اغا تا منگا اکت بایو کنسیتوشن منگا قانون اساسی تا بایو دا اغا اساسی قوانین دی چه دا اغا پا اساس بانی او دولت چلی گیت سا right next is legislation legislation as i told you it's a, a body who develops laws uh, for the countries to be run right thank you so much that's all from my side please uh, if you have any questions any comments any suggestions since this is the first introductory lecture so i will i would i would be very happy to get feedback from you guys on how we can improve our lectures and what should include and what should be excluded and uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding the topics that we discussed or if you have any suggestions uh, i'm more than happy to be receiving them and then to act upon that thank you so much assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh